One of the biggest reasons for sure why Photoshop exists in the first place is, you already guessed it, compositing. Have a look at this composite. We have a background, we have a subject, and here we have created some fantastic shadows. Now, the biggest problem with compositing is matching the subject with that of the background. But what if I told you Photoshop could do it for you automatically? And that brings us to our very first feature of Photoshop 2022, and that is harmonization. So all you gotta do is to have the subject layer selected and then go to filter and then neural filters. Don't worry, this is not a cloud filter. That's good news. So let's scroll down and turn on harmonization. Now simply choose what you wanna match it to. So in this case, we wanna match it to the background. So let's choose the background layer and See, it's processing on device, not on the cloud. And there you go, we have gotten so much closer, isn't it? Here's the before, here's the after. On top of that, you can also do some additional adjustments like playing with the colors, playing with the saturation and the brightness, that's up to you. Let's go ahead and increase the brightness slightly to match it better. And there you go, let's take a look at the before and after. So here is the before, here is the after. It is so much closer, isn't it? It's not perfect, but it's a good starting point. Now, the major drawback with this feature is that it is absolutely non-destructive. Even when the subject layer was a smart object, it made a duplicate of that and it rasterized it all. So that's that. Now it's time for us to talk about the rest of the top new features of Photoshop 2022. Hi there, this is Unmesh from Piximperfect. Welcome to this video. I'm super excited to share these with you. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back to the magical world of Photoshop and let's talk a little more about harmonization before we move on to the other ones. So have a look at this example. Here in this case, the subject is already matching so much with that of the background without us doing anything. Let's say we wanted to do a little more adjustment to match it slightly even so better. So let's go ahead and select the subject and go to filter and then neural filters. We're gonna do the same thing. Turn on harmonization. We wanna match it with that of the background, of course. But in this case, it just goes weird. So know that harmonization is not always 100% perfect. So you can go ahead and try decreasing the strength to about 9 or 10% and see if it does it better. But I think it was better off the way it already was. So it is not 100% perfect, but worth a try. But then again, it's also destructive. Let's move on to the next one. We all are familiar with the object selection tool that allows you to create a selection around the object that you want to select and Photoshop automatically does it for you. But this feature takes it to the extreme next level. Just turn on this new object finder checkbox and just hover over it. And it automatically tells you what are the objects it can select. Pretty much amazing, isn't it? So let's say you wanna select this plant, hover over it. If it activates, just click on it and it creates a selection of it. And if you wanna select this vase right there, just click on it and it does the trick. By the way, if you wanna check out all of the objects that we can select, just click on this button and it shows you all of the selectable objects. Now, this feature has a drawback. It doesn't do pretty good with hair or fur. So let's say I wanna select this girl right there. So if I click on her, have a look. It doesn't quite make a pretty good mask of the hair. And if we create a mask out of her, have a look. It's not perfect. It's good for hard edged objects, but not really perfect for things that deal with hair and fur. No matter how you create your gradients in Photoshop, whether using the gradient tool or using a gradient adjustment layer, there are new interpolation settings this time. In simple terms, Photoshop is offering you new ways in which colors are blended in a gradient. For example, let's say we created a gradient from black to white. Now at the bottom, we have a method section. This is new. Perceptual method is the new method from Adobe that Adobe says creates a more natural blend. Now we have another one called linear. And we have another one called classic. Classic is the old way in which gradients were blended. Now, how are they different, you might ask? To clear confusion, let's open up the gradient and decrease the smoothness to zero. First of all, let's start with classic, which mathematically makes the most sense. Hit OK. So if you open the color picker now and you try to sample the colors of each section of the image, have a look at the bottom. Look, the brightness should be around 0%, which it is. Right here, it should be about 25%, right? and it is 25%. In the middle, it should be 50, and here it should be 75, and at the very top, of course, 100%. Now, this makes mathematically the most sense. However, when you have something else selected like perceptual, the ratios would follow a kind of curve mathematically. Now, let's take a look. At the bottom, we have brightness zero. Now, in here, it is 14%. In here, instead of 50, we have about 38, 39%. At the top, it's 68. So, 
it's a different math. And similar is true for linear. Adobe says perceptual is the most natural one, but I'll let you be the judge. And also in your projects, you can try all of these three maths and see what works best for you. Moving on to one of the most essential features of Photoshop 2022 that is very important for any artist out there that does digital work, and that is content credentials. You can go to window and then open up content credentials and just turn on what it stores. So when you export your image, even as a JPEG, it will have your name on it. It will have all of the assets that you use. It will have the things you have done to the image. So right here, you can choose to include the edits and activity that has been done on this image. And also the name of the producer. You can choose or not choose to include that. Now let's have a look at the preview of how this will look. So it'll say signed by Adobe. When you go ahead to verify this image, it will also say which assets you have used here. And at the bottom, it would have your name. Let's take a look. Produced by Unmesh Tindab. Once you have these checked, let's test it. Let's go to File, Export. Let's export it as a JPEG. Now, when you scroll down, you will have the option to attach the content credentials to the image. Let's turn this on and click on Export. Let's type Test, Save. So here we have a JPEG. It's a simple JPEG. Now, how do we verify that we created it? And also, what are the assets we have used? Well, just open this website, verify.contentauthenticity.org. Click on choose image, drag and drop the JPEG and take a look. Everything comes up right here. It has all of the assets used. So this is the background, this is the subject and it has the exact name of these assets that I licensed from Envato Elements. Highly recommend it. Check the links in the description for possible discounts. Have a look at the right hand side. It says which version we have created it in. It has all the edits and activity here which might or might not be accurate since this is new. And of course at the bottom, it has produced by your name. Now the only drawback is that if you open this JPEG, test.jpg and you do some changes to it like I painted some black over it and then when we save it it might erase all the details so I've saved over it now let's try this image drag and drop it here it says no content credentials so although it might be good for verifying that this is your work when you submit it because it shows you the assets and the changes you have made to it it might not be good to track the source of a particular work. Let's say somebody opened your work, made some changes, and it's circulated around the internet. There is no way somebody could open the modified JPEG and tell that this is created by you. One of the more utilitarian features that is extremely helpful for somebody who uses Adobe Illustrator assets in Photoshop, this is major. Take a look at this. Earlier, what used to happen? Let's say we have Adobe Illustrator open, and I want this object inside Photoshop. I would select it, press Ctrl or Command C, go to Photoshop and then paste it by pressing Ctrl or Command V. Earlier, we did not have the layers option right here. We either had smart object, pixels, path, shape layer. Now, if you choose smart object, number one, you cannot modify the individual paths, shapes, etc. You can also not modify the colors. And if you wanted to do so, number two, you would have to go back to Illustrator, modify it, and then come back. It would be a pretty long process. If you choose pixels, that would be raster and you would lose details. If it's path, it would be just the path here. And if it's shape layer, you wouldn't have much. So let's make it smaller. It's just one single thing. It wouldn't be helpful. Now we have layers instead. Let's make this document a little bigger. If we press Ctrl or Command V or paste it in any other way, if we choose layers, hit OK, have a look. Everything will be imported as layers. Have a look at this group. If we open it, everything is a shape layer. This eyebrow layer, if we scroll down, we have this particular area. If you wanted to change the color, just double click on it and change the color to whatever you like. And all of this is vector. All of these are shapes. Have a look at the icon right there. And if you wanted to modify the shape, you know what to do. Just select the shape you want, then press P for the pen tool, hold the controller command, click on an area, just zoom in and you can just modify it the way you want. This is the level of flexibility you get by choosing layers. This new feature will allow you to share your work for commenting, whether you're collaborating or you want some public input, this is possible. However, it is only possible with Photoshop cloud documents. So here I have a cloud document, PSDC, not PSD, PSDC, Photoshop document cloud. So let's open that. So this is the color matching that I had done without using the harmonization filter. So here's the before not matching at all. Here's the after. And of course, using the manual old but gold curves and hue saturation. So all you got to do is to go to window and then comments right here. You can share it with people by clicking on share. You can share with individual people by typing their email or you can create a public link by clicking on change and choosing anyone with the link can view. Now, besides commenting, you can also allow them to save a copy of this document. But I'm going to leave it at that. And you can copy the link. And let's go ahead and visit this link. Here we will have the Photoshop document and you can comment whatever you want. 
Let's click on submit. So it will be always here on the web. Once you're in Photoshop, you will see all the comments here as well. You can comment from here as well and tag a particular user. Also, if you're commenting on the web, you can point out certain things. Like I can say that in this area, make the shadows darker and submit it. And it would be submitted with that annotation. The next feature is more AI-ish and this one is for the landscapes. This can completely change the time of the day, the season. If it's a greenery scene, it can make it absolutely snowy and here's how it works. Go to filter, neural filters. Yes, it's a neural filter. Turn on a landscape mixer. Let's say you want to make it snowy. Just click on this preset image. You can also import one of your custom images for reference. Click on this one for now and take a look. It completely changed the scene. Here's the before Here's the after. See, it's changing those areas according to this image. Also, let's say you want to make a sunset scene like this one. Let's click on that. Let's try this one. You can also choose the strength here. Just wow. It's not just changing the colors. It's changing the whole thing. Have a look at the mountains. Here's the before. Here's the after. It's also changing the water before, after. Just look at it. What kind of magic is this? If you want to have more sunset, and heck, sunset is <laughs> introduced. How crazy is that? If you wanted to have more spring, you can increase it. And the way it works just, just amazes me. If you want to have more winter, let's see how this one works out. Oh my gosh. This, my friend, is just crazy. Have a look at the snow in the mountains. Before, after. There's something fishy about this image. Have a look at the house right here. It's not the same house. It's a different thing right there. Here's the before. Have a look right here. Here's the after. But the positioning is just so accurate. I don't know what magic is going on. Let's hit OK for now. But I don't think this is practically usable because we still have a lot to improve, of course, in the quality front. But of course, you can use it as a background as well. Let's say you have a subject and in the background you want a snowy scene for a different set of mountains. You can just bring that in and blur it a little bit, create a shallow depth of field and you won't be able to tell. This is seriously one of those mind boggling features in its early stages and I would love to see how this one develops. And by the way, what's fascinating is it's processing on device, not on the cloud. And that's why it is way, way faster than all of those cloud filters. This is a completely different thing. Here's the before, here's the after. Things have been replaced here. Let's take a peek at the new feature, actually old feature improved. That is the improved colorize. So let's go to filter, again neural filters, and this time the colorize filter is much improved. You can expect to see better default colors than the previous version. Also, the UI has been rearranged. There's a new feature here, and features like this we absolutely love because it gives us more manual controls, and that is output as a new color layer. So if we check that and hit OK, have a look. This is a color layer. The blend mode is color. And if you just have this layer visible, see, it just has the color. And turn everything back on. And you can be just in this layer and modify the colors in different areas. For example, let's say I wanted to extend these blues to the arms. Well, no problem. Just make sure that with the eyedropper tool, sample current layer is chosen. Take the brush and then sample this blue. Just paint right here. There you go. So all we are modifying is this color layer. So color is separately placed on other layer and nothing else. No details, no nothing, just the color. The next feature is color transfer and this also happens to be inside of neural filters. So what it does is that it allows you to transfer the color palette of one image to the other image creatively. It might not always work the way you want, but it's worth a try. So let's say I want to import Van Gogh's Starry Night and want those colors here. So click on browse, locate the image and click on use this image. And take a look, it transfers those colors there. Have a look at the yellow areas. It made light those yellow and the blue areas, rest of the things are blue. It might not always be perfect. It might not always be the way you want, but it is the way it is. If you want to preserve the luminance, you can just check that. You can also play with color strength, saturation, hue and brightness and just hit OK. I'm not satisfied with this color being on all of the areas. So of course, you can create a mask and then take the brush with black as the foreground color. Just take it away from the skin, so on and so forth or the entire subject, that's up to you. But that's the feature. And if you like the color of some image and want to apply it here, maybe you can give this a try. So that's all for Photoshop 2022. What was your favorite feature and which feature do you think needs the most improvement? Let's talk about it in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching again. Thank you for your time. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.